look for your ex colleagues or your college alumni who are working in that company and send connection requests to them visa in european countries or in uk is uh, is relatively easier i was previously working with adobe so how, how is that different i would not imagine someone in india saying something like that you would end up spending roughly 30 to 40% of that just over rent there have been two rounds of layoff already hey folks welcome to 100 gb and today this is the first time we're go- going to have a podcast on this channel i have a very special guest with me his name is abhishek he will be introducing himself and the fun thing or the recent interesting happening is that he has recently moved from meta london to india and we're going to basically discuss about that So uh Abhishek take the stage and go ahead tell something fun about yourself. <laughs> Hi folks, uh, I'm Abhishek. I have been in the computer industry for around 8 uh, years now. I was working in India for close to 6 years and then I then I moved to Facebook London. I still don't like the name Meta so I'll keep saying Facebook. <clears throat> uh, so I moved to Facebook London. and after spending like sort of one and half years there i recently moved back to india so yeah that's about me wow uh yeah i mean this this moving back to india thing is is pretty big like even for me who is not in india and i'm pretty sure for other people who are in india who are thinking to go abroad um yeah we'll we'll probably explore it more okay so my next or my yeah we we talked about your background do you want to add anything else no no that's pretty much it i passed out from nit kurukshetra in 2015 so that's the additional thing that we can add cool so yeah he, interestingly he was my college junior but we never met in the college <laughs> okay so yeah let's let's get to the next question so how did you end up in london was it an intra company transfer or did you get a new job so it was sort of a new job the facebook recruiters reached out to me uh, and in the same time my wife was also planning for a masters degree in london she got her admission into lancaster university and so the timing worked out pretty well so that's why both of us moved to london but it was a new job not an intra company transfer oh cool so interesting so how did you apply for the job so i didn't actually apply the recruiters reached out to me via linkedin i think having a, a strong linkedin profile really helps uh, to grab these opportunities interesting so you were not actively looking for the opportunities but you actually had your profile updated yes was there a resume as well on the profile uh no i did not have a resume on the profile but like everything was updated like what the projects i worked on and uh <clears throat> i also feel it helps to have a right connection so that when recruiters are searching your profile should appear so one strategy okay. that uh, one could follow to target uh, <clears throat> any company that they aspire for like look for your ex colleagues or your college uh, alumni who are working in that company and send connection hmm. request to them uh, i have uh, seen that they are more likely than others to accept your request so that would of increase course. your visibility uh, when that company's recruiters are searching for you yeah that that is actually very true and you can probably add a filter uh for the location as well yes like in this college yes. this location then you'll probably ping them interesting nice okay so and how how was the visa situation for you because for a lot of folks like visa is a major problem like especially for the us even if i go out and start applying for us jobs then visa is a problem and because of which the uh like it's it's a big uh, restriction i'd say So yeah you are right Gaurav so the US visa is a bit of challenge but uh, visa in European countries or in UK is uh, is relatively easier so they have something called as skilled worker visa and uh, most of the good product companies that hire from India uh, those would give you a sponsorship and you would qualify for that visa uh, some people also use 
uh, this as a st stepping stone to enter into the US. Like for example, they can work in UK or Europe for one year and then take an intra-company transfer because getting an L1 visa is relatively easier than uh, getting an H1B visa directly. Okay. Oh, pretty good. <laughs> so do you know a few folks who, who did that already? Uh, uh, not, not, not at a personal level, but yeah, I know of hmm. uh, some, I know a few, few folks who did this. Okay. So quickly, how long did the, did the visa process take? So it took around three months. So, and, uh, I had help like the Facebook provided, uh, a consultant who sort of took care of okay. everything and helped in arranging. So all three documents. months from, got it. So three months from the date of the offer. Yes. So, uh, like you, before the date at which you are planning to join, uh, three months before that you should start your visa process. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I think it is roughly the same for US as well, uh, provided you <laughs> you get the appointment. Yeah, yeah, that which was like, which was very hard to get last year or last to last year. Practically, they stopped all the Elven visas. OK, let's get to the next one. Why did you move to London? Like, What was the core motivation? Uh, the core motivation for me was to stay with my wife uh, because she was planning for her master's. And <clears throat> so that was the primary motivation. Uh, the secondary motivation was also that I wanted to explore uh, for a little while how the working is uh, different in different countries, uh, like how it is different from India and how the culture of Facebook is different from some other I was previously working with Adobe, so how, how is that different? So we keep hearing things about Facebook and Google or supposedly the same company. So I wanted to mm -hmm. see for a while if it's, what's the difference like? Okay. And you were earlier working in uh, Adobe? Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll get to the, like the work culture differences that you saw, if any. Before that, what sort of salary bump did you get? When considering so when the HR rolls out an offer uh, from UK, they don't really consider uh, your India salaries because they are not directly comparable. But uh, to give a rule of thumb, uh, I would say that uh, your total compensation that was in India, it like multiplied with by 2.5 and that should give a fair idea of the total compensation you would get in uk oh and is that true even today as well or has the factor changed uh, i would say that in past uh, two years the salaries in india have gotten better and the factor now might be 2.25 or even two for some folks so, so yeah it's it's very fascinating almost the same is the case with us as well as in i guess the factor earlier was three to three three and a half x maybe now it's funny like i i have seen one 1.5 x as well <laughs> so yeah software salaries are like really catching up in india these days yeah. now let's get to the work culture or the uh, yeah specifically work not like the general cultural differences, like just the work culture differences that you saw in in London when compared to in India. So what I have seen is that uh, the work culture in London is slightly, slightly laid back. So at least people in India offices are uh, very ambitious in their career and they want to progress the ladder uh, practically as fast as they can. So they, they are sometimes putting in the extra efforts or working for long hours when there is a deadline coming up even when there is no pressure from management i'm not talking about toxic culture where the management pressures you i'm mostly talking about when people do it out of their own uh, self-will in uk it was uh, quite the opposite uh, like no one was working over weekends and people would just switch off after five or six pm hmm. So they, they typically start their day early around eight and then finish by five or six. So I, I personally found it a bit uh, laid back compared to India. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's one thing that I've, I've noticed as well. That's true. Yeah. So laid back actually yeah, laid back uh, in both sense in the sense of daily work 
and also in the sense of uh, maybe I'd say career development as well. Like people do care about their careers, but I, I've seen a few people here like who just code for the love of it. They they actually don't care what level they are at. They just love coding. They just love programming. So <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Like seeing these folks in India is a bit hard. Yeah, there there are. Yeah, yeah. but the, but the ex the number of examples over here are more. It's about the ratio, like the ratio of them in India would be very less and in UK or perhaps US yep. it would be a bit more. Okay. So like yeah, I, I saw some people uh, who are at uh, who are in their like early 40s or late 30s and let's say they were at a L5 or some of them even at L4 position and, and they were perfectly happy with it. Like. The, uh, this much is enough for it like we don't want to move to a staff software engineer or exactly something like that. i i would not hmm, so i yeah. would not imagine someone in india saying something like that that was a bit of uh, right for me. yeah exactly the same experience for for me as well mm -hmm. cool uh okay let's let's maybe move on to uh yeah we, we yeah we can talk about the savings or uh, the difference in the savings that you can have in London versus what you were already having in India? Uh, so I am perhaps not a very uh, right person to ask this. I wasn't, uh, so my savings were roughly the same in India as they were in London. But one reason was that for that when I joined, my initial RSU grant was at like the all time high price of Facebook. And then we saw how it dropped during the like past one and a half years and it was roughly the ah, one okay. third of what it was initially oh so man yeah that, that, that was a big hit but yeah you can you can say that uh, savings in it uk would roughly be uh, roughly be equivalent to what you would save in india maybe 1.25 times or uh, 1.5 times at max that's if, it if you are really okay, into so saving but uh, it's it's not a huge multiplier and uh, the core reason for that, I believe, is the very high rental costs in London. So in my experience, uh, disposable income that you would get post tax every month in your bank account, you would end up spending roughly 30 to 40 percent of that just over rent. And the, yeah. the situation is degrading, at least in UK, because the energy prices are sky high these days so that that it's a huge portion man yeah for all the folks who are considering going out of india for money uh, software engineers yeah. at least yeah don't you you <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay you you maybe have you maybe have a general idea now yes yeah. uh, but okay how about how about non software engineers do you think that if i i actually don't know but is there a significant salary difference? Like I don't have enough data points to comment on that with confidence, but uh, based on anecdotal stories, uh, they would be in a better of position than software engineers because uh, in other professions, the salaries are still not at that level in India. For example, right. if someone is a teacher or a, like for teacher, I have few data points. They, they earn well. I mean, compared compared to what they earn in India, they earn good amount in in UK. I see. Yeah, I can give an example at least for the US. Mm -hmm. Like in India, the the normal cooks at a normal restaurant, yeah. even in a metropolitan, I'm not sure how, maybe thirty thousand a month uh, or maybe forty thousand at max. No, forty. Yeah, is twenty. Ambitious. But let's say in a <laughs> okay, let's say let's say twenty five. Yeah. Uh, but over here, I, I've heard firsthand from a cook who is working on like a normal Indian restaurant here in the Bay Area. So he he's being paid around 3700 bucks, which like even compared to the Bay or the US standards, is good enough. So yes. if you see the difference between the cook salary and the software engineer salary in India versus over here, the difference is a lot in India. But here... They are actually not a lot of difference. There. Yeah, yeah. For those type of roles, it it actually makes sense hmm. if, if they can move and uh, the money is a motivator. Then they they definitely should consider it. Yeah. And, uh, I, cool. I, I 
i have also seen it for the like minimum wages jobs so they are like if someone is doing a minimum wage job in india and uh, they would be earning i believe uh, again Man. around 15000 or 20000 per month that's let's consider the example maybe we can driver like drivers are around uh, 20000 in like <clears throat> uh, metropolitan yeah. cities and uh, like even if you take the minimum hourly rate for uk or us it would be far better hmm. man i i think that 20000 is also like a good case i was watching a video from this youtube channel called brute mm-hmm. uh yesterday only so they were they met a few security guards in a society in some some metropolitan uh and his salary was around 13000 So yeah it's quite weird differences this disparity is there okay anyway let's uh so yeah one one major learning that you got while you're stay in london like one major learning that you will remember for the rest of your life so uh i learned the importance of civic sense like it's really important like people drive in lanes in traffic or uh, they would stand on the one side of escalator so that uh, <clears throat> other uh, if someone is in hurry and they want to walk up they can do that on the side and if they are boarding a train or a metro then they would get out first so i saw that civic sense was uh, far, <laughs> is far better in those countries and i realized the importance of that uh, we as indians can perhaps aim to improve that a bit in our own country as well and another thing that i personally learned was how to work with a uh, how to put it like a, how to work with people who come from very diverse culture and background and how to communicate with them like, to be very careful like what mm, is uh, right what is very normal in one culture could be considered offensive in another and so that was another That's true. thing Hmm so on the first point it rings a bell actually I remember um uh, when I was working in Gurgaon uh, my flatmate's colleague was visiting from Norway mm-hmm. and he stayed here for around 2 weeks mm-hmm. and like I I would quote what he said one day <laughs> he said that in India everyone is in a hurry yet no one is on time yeah yeah that's true that's true <laughs> it was so funny we loved at it but yeah that's that's maybe uh, the, but on a the, on a serious uh, on like not serious uh, on another note uh, i think a lot of this culture comes from the resources and development so yeah, for example uh, in india uh, many people are fighting for the same set of resources uh, so they are Correct. trying to get ahead of one another and that ingrains into the mind so uh, yeah, but that, but if you right. if the resources are in abundance and people are sure that even if they reach after the others in the queue they will still get them so then i believe they would be more patient and uh, what i have seen is that in in uh, in some specific sections uh, this is improving a lot like for example in corporate offices or let's say corporate lunches you would you would see people make an orderly queue at the counter but then the same people in the in a let's for example a marriage party there would be a chaos so i think uh, hmm. i think yeah. i would like to think of it uh, i would quote uh, balaji vishwanathan he is a famous koran so he mentioned in one of his answer that we are building islands of excellences like you will find some residential societies which are really clean and spectacular hmm. but yeah uh, some adjacent plot of land might not be that clean so it's like we are building islands of excellences and at some point they will start to merge and then the things would change for better or they are already changing for better at a very fast pace yeah effectively so when we see the developed nations like after living here i would say like the entire country feels like uh, a society in gurgaon yeah of like a, a residential complex uh, yeah i i think that uh, we have a long way to go but yeah the the pace is right yeah at least now <laughs> yeah okay 
all right let's get to the like the crux or the major the, like the primary question why did you move back i know there are like multitudes of reasons we can take them one by one yeah so uh primary reason was the so i already planned of coming back i just accelerated my plans but uh due to some recent events one of them being uh the energy crisis in europe and very high cost of living and uh so that was one reason and another was uh the things going on in facebook in general like there there have been two rounds of layoff already so i was uh, <coughs> safe of, i was safe in first round of layoffs uh but uh, that was very the, the whole process was very traumatic and ordeal so i just didn't wanted to go through that that again so i just uh, left it at my own choice another were like financial reasons as we were discussing the cost of living and savings are very low so that's why i moved back to india and the non financial reasons are like being closer to the family for uh most of the life events hmm. uh, if you are outside of india you would have to you would miss many of the weddings or birthdays and like uh, god forbid uh, everything someone, yeah like, your grandparent pass away like things like you would miss on a lot of things even if you don't want but it just would not be logistically possible so it was a combination of these reasons for which i decided to move back to india hmm yeah i I when I think about it I think effectively I I <laughs> I stumble across all of these reasons like should should we move back or not well I I think this this is actually true with a lot of other yeah. NRIs a uh, lot of other people at least in my group yeah uh, but I still say that it it is super tough decision yes and like seeing that you have made it <laughs> a lot of other folks might be inspired as well yeah cool so uh, so okay we coming back to adobe H- how's your life over there now is it like similar to what you had before uh, you joined meta or facebook yeah it's it's pretty much similar i i joined the same team again i had a oh, wow. pretty good uh, reputation as well as working relationship with the team so i joined the same team again liking it so far nice i've seen uh there's this other person as well who who was with me at google okay and then he worked at google for around i guess 10 months and then he moved back to adobe like for some reason <laughs> he I, i'm not sure like about the reasons but yeah he was yeah, happy back there text uh, me that person's Manali. name after this uh, i would like to have a chat with him as well <laughs> Okay. Okay. Nice. All right. I I think maybe if you work for a while at a company uh and then you maybe move to some other company I think salary is not a thing that you consider there after or maybe not even the perks yeah. because the kind of network or the kind of relations you have with your uh, with your colleagues with your peers it kind of uh, tumbles everything else. Yes, I absolutely agree with that and <clears throat> another thing is that as as we grow in our roles as an engineer uh those network and relations become very important for your success like for example if you are working That's on right. a project uh, that spans across multiple teams if you have good relationship with there you can move the pieces very fast but if you try to go like by a formal route then it would take a while 100% right i mean being in a platform team i realize <laughs> uh I, i exactly feel what you are trying to say uh yeah you you need to build some personal relationship yes. with uh where it's very natural for you to have one with your first level peers yes but having it with your sister teams is yeah. uh is kind of a game that you need to play yeah One question I have is like where what's the best channel for people to reach out to you? Uh, I'm pretty sure there might be a lot of people who will have a lot of questions, NRIs or maybe college folks who are trying to get 
get to Meta or get to London? For quick queries that can be answered over uh, text, they can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And if someone wants to book some dedicated time and discuss things at length, I think I have a few slots on talkmate.io. There is a link in my LinkedIn okay. profile where they can book my calendar and cool. we can have a one-to-one discussion as well. Amazing. So I'll add all those links in the description below. Please feel free to check those out. And yeah, so like what's what's next now? Where where are you headed? What's the future? So, what are your plans now? So I joined back uh, my previous team in Adobe. Uh, forgot to link, hmm. update my LinkedIn profile. That reminds me that I should do it. <laughs> So I joined my, uh, I joined the same team and I'm working with them. Uh, for now, uh, my long term plan is for now to stay in India. So unless things change drastically for us in next two to three years, that's my plan for now. Cool. That That's a good plan. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I think we covered all of what we had. Do you have anything else in mind? Uh, just just uh, a piece of advice for if someone is uh, uh, consider moving like uh, every place has its pros and cons and some some things that we are taking for granted while in one place we then we tend to miss out on those very much after moving to some other place uh, like for example uh, one of them is food <laughs> like you will never get the same test taste elsewhere uh, you will not realize it while while you are in india you will think yeah that's okay i can manage without that or i can manage without this that's not so important but once that you realize the importance of something after it's gone so uh, that would happen that would happen for people who are moving back from uh, let's say uk or us to india as well so that that's something to keep in mind while making that decision yeah definitely oh if you're talking about food like i know that we practically get everything almost everything here in the bay area the taste is not the same taste is good enough yeah <laughs> not the same but good enough yeah. one thing in specific that i have is pani puri so pani puri in in haryana uh, like the ones we get in the local telas, it's like the suji uh, golgappas yes. with that specific sweet water. That thing is, is nowhere to be seen over here. So over here, it's like there is just one company that creates those puffs and it supplies to all the restaurants and everyone has that same thing. So I'm now like nitpicking. That's a big concern for me. Okay, yeah, this was great discussion. I think a lot of people uh, got to know a lot of things and I'm pretty sure that they'll have more queries and they'll sure. reach out to you. Sure. Uh, okay, and I think we will close it right here. Sure, thanks Thanks for hosting me, Goro. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Um, I will probably do it again sometime. Sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, on a different topic, maybe. Uh, okay. I think we're done. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.